Hello and welcome to this file and we're going to be designing an input component here in Figma. We're going to be using lots of auto layout and we're also going to be using some component properties to build this. So if you're interested in how to build an input component or if you're interested in how these pieces in Figma can be used to build an input component or any component of your interest, keep on watching. So let's, we're gonna get started here. So here are the different states that I wanna focus on and these are just some icons that I'm gonna be using to represent some like filler things, but also these are icons that can represent different ways you can use an input. So we're gonna start out, we're gonna start out, and we're gonna start out with input label. And the inputs that we're going to make are going to reference a lot of some of the material design um, inputs that they have. They have like three or four four different types of inputs, but we're just gonna focus on one and you'll see which one it is. Okay, all right, so we have input 16, we're good, we're good. And I'm just gonna not make this the zero, zero, zero black. I'm just gonna do that one. And then I'm gonna auto layout, so I do shift A, create auto layout, and I'm gonna put a stroke around this. I'm gonna put a fill in this. All right, the stroke here is gonna also be, and I'm gonna give this four. All right, so I'm gonna also add the calendar in here. And then I'm also gonna add both of these in here. So because all of these are all living in this auto layout frame together, the spacing is 10, right? So that's not really what I want to happen. What I want to do is start grouping these. So what I'm gonna do first is decrease these by the size. I'm gonna make these 20 and I'm gonna move this together and I'm gonna auto layout these together and I'm gonna auto layout these together. And what this allows me to do is now that these are grouped and the relationships are, these are grouped together and these are grouped together, when I change this from 10 to auto, the, uh, the distance uh, between these two groups or frames, I, I should choose frames, frames, becomes uh, relative, meaning depending on how wide your input is will determine how uh, how far away these are from each other. So these, as you can see, this input is relatively short, but if we want to make it longer, these will go out here where we want them to be, and these will stay here. And I'm going to change this to eight pixels instead, and eight pixels. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go by uh, factors of four or eight, but four is like the smallest that I'll try and go. Two is my limit, but here we are. Okay, and I'm going to change this again. All right, so this is, this is, I'm gonna also change this to 16, or is it 12? Maybe this will go 16, 50, 53. Okay, cool, and I'm gonna change it to the, all right, great. Hmm. Let's make this 16 too, okay, cool. So this is gonna be the default. Now this is, I'm gonna make, this is what the default is. So this is gonna be the input label. And you'll see why I make these separately. It's just because of the way the component properties work and a very specific way that I want to apply the component properties, which will make things, I feel like, much easier to uh, adjust and change when you're using uh, inputs uh, if you're using these inputs to design. So this one's gonna be filled. So with the default, I actually don't want this to be black. I want this to be a gray. And I don't want it to do that. I want to do this. So let's pick a gray. I'm not, I don't have a color system, so I'm just kind of picking and choosing and these may not be like accessible because I, again, didn't, I'm not really focused on that right at the moment. So we're just gonna pick a gray. And for the filled, I'm gonna, this is, this is actually not gonna be input label anymore. This is gonna be called the input text. And I'm gonna create input label. And I'm gonna make this much smaller. I'm gonna put some auto layout on that because of what I'm about to do. So what I'm about to do here is I'm gonna create an auto layout, uh, frame with this and the spacing really doesn't matter because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this absolute positioning. So I'm going to, I made this absolute positioning and I'm going to fill this in 
this has, let's do eight on the side and let's move this here. All right, that's great. And I want to make actually this, this I want to make a two to indicate that it's filled, a width of two. So that's for filled, for focused, I'm gonna do that later. I'm gonna do error first. And all I'm gonna do for error is honestly like change the color of this. So I'm gonna just pick a red. Maybe nothing, like maybe something like this. Okay, good. All right, and then for disabled, I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna fill it in to a uh, the fill instead of a white, it'd be like another gray to show that like you can't interact with it. So those are the main inputs that we have. I did mix something up. I just noticed that this is actually the focused one. So basically when someone has selected this input and they're typing stuff in, this is focused. This is the filled one which is, let's take this color, and we're going to take this and replace it. Nope. Stroke, here's this. All right. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, cool. So here we have all the types. You have default, you have filled, meaning someone's already put in stuff, but it's not the one, uh, Users are focused on. This is the focused one, meaning they're probably interacting with this one. This is error, meaning the input does not accept what they put in and disabled, you cannot interact with it. So I'm gonna start cre creating components with it. There's probably a faster way for me to do this, but I'm just gonna do this. And now I'm gonna combine as a variant and I'm gonna create this component and name it input. Woo, okay. So now that we have the inputs, I'm gonna start using the component property. So this, I'm gonna create this as input, uh, this is called label, and the value is input label, which is fine. This is also called input label, input label, input label. So I'm gonna make this input label. Beautiful. Now these are gonna be input text, which I'm just, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Create a new property, there we go, text and input text. That's great, perfect input text. All right, so we've done that so fast. Um, and then I want to select all of these and I want to create this as an instance of, yes, this is, left icon create this is gonna be the right icon and you'll see what the chevron is uh, and then this is gonna be right icon wonderful wonderful and then this is actually gonna be a boolean so I am gonna create a layer boolean and then show layers. Okay, this is drop down, and that is true. Great. So there you go. Honestly, that is how you create an input component. So here, let's actually use them and see and make sure that like let's QA this, make sure it works. Okay. So I don't want. Oh, you know what? I also need to add. I need to be able to add a this, and I need to put this as a thing too, a, 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 um, a layer boolean. So left, left icon show is true right now. right icon right 
that was true. Okay. Okay, now that we have that, which is important, it is important, is when you're interacting with these things, now you have all your interactions can be here. So one of the things I already noticed is I forgot to name these properties. So I'm going to name this uh, default. And this is going to be called state. And then this is filled. This is focused. This is error. This is disabled. Okay, cool. Okay, now that we have, now we can see that we have all the different, um, you know, this, the, the, the name of the comp component, or more so the state, and then all the different things that you can do with the component. So I'm actually gonna reorganize this because I don't like how this is organized, which you can do here in Figma. So this is state label, right? That's the one that, that you can change with in the text. Left icon, right icon. So I'm gonna put drop down here. You can determine whether or not you want this to be a drop down. And then I'm gonna group uh, these left and right. So. I'm going to put the show and not show, and then once you show or not show, we'll determine if you select and change the icon. So let's, let me show here. So let's make this input like a date, uh, select a date, right? So you can change the label to select a date. Um, and if you want, as you can see, this is probably going to be a drop down. So you can keep the drop down here. You don't have to hide it, but if you wanted to, you can, but I don't want the right icon here. So I'm going to hide that. And so that's exactly what I did. And as you can see, it's not showing there, but if I do show it, then I can pick all the icons. So hypothetically, you probably have a lot more icons to choose from, but not in this case. So we, we're just going to hide it. Now, if we wanted to, we can just take this. What's so cool about this is that I can change this state, right? And I click focused and this label properly changes to where the input label goes because this is the input label and not this is not the input label so this is the input label and there because of component properties it recognizes that and i can change this to like a date so instead of having to again click a billion times into this i can just click this and just change this to like january 1st 2023 four three four three wonderful and then now i can change it if i want to a different well, maybe that's an error or maybe that's disabled or not disabled. Maybe that's filled and I don't need to like do all that stuff. So yeah, that's how you create an input in Figma. It's quick and easy. It's so much quicker and so much easier now these days with all the updates that Figma has made in the last like few years. I bet you they've made a ton of other updates and changes that uh, I'll have to look more into. Let me know if you have any questions about making inputs or other parts of Figma and I'm happy to talk about it with you. All right, see ya.